Long ultrasound and the novel COVID-19. This is Pocus Bites, Diagnosis and Beyond. An opinion lecture, Christian Spanish Smith, MD, FACP, Denver Hospital, Connecticut. As a disclaimer, COVID-19 is a novel disease and my this opinion may change over time. I do not have any conflict of interest or disclosure to make. Um, this disease is caused by the new SARS-CoV-2. It has been declared an a pandemic by the WHO and today at this moment has been has been diagnosed in more than 300,000 people and has caused for more almost 15,000 deaths uh, worldwide. The United States alone has 33,000 cases in the world. So LUS and COVID-19 I just want you to first remember that the point of care ultrasound should be performed by trained physicians or clinical personnel. Second, remember that point of care ultrasound is a technique that should be used having a question in mind. You want to know something and you will try to answer that with the point of care ultrasound findings. Point of care ultrasound may be difficult in some patients from causes inner end to the patient rather than the technique. So if you cannot get your image, please do not make it up and just be sincere. LUS and COVID-19, in my practice, I recommend a complete eight zones examination if possible in every patient. I do the Volpicelli uh, 2012 guidelines all the time and uh, then I move, if it is possible, to the uh, posterior lungs in some patients. The lung ultrasound is never complete without the clinical scenario and a careful examination of the history and the volume status of the patient. And I want you to remember that any cause of interstitial lung disease, if present in the patient, may obscure your findings in lung ultrasound. Here in A, we see a normal aerated lung. This is from Manolescu et al. in 2018. It's a beautiful article, um, definitely recommended. Then we have a wide lung in a patient with extensive GGO, which may be uh, the case of a patient with uh, COVID-19. Then we have the fibrotic wide lung with some B lines, a little bit of uh, increase or, uh, or thickening of the pleura, and in, in fibrosis and uh, interstitial syndrome, which will not be very different from pulmonary edema, edema with multiple uh, flickering B lines per quadrant. So the possible rationality to use LUS in the COVID-19 patient is that it's practical and portable. It's easy to clean and disinfect and possibly ideal to monitor known lesions. So if you have a patient that already has a CAT scan and you LUS this patient, you have a long ultrasound of this patient on admission or while you have him, you can repeat this LUS and uh, tell your uh, findings and see if the patient is getting worse or better. It's an adjuvant to evaluate volume status and fluid resuscitation. We can figure out the ejection fraction, presence or not of uh, pericardial effusion, and of course the inferior vena cava, although that can be controversial, but uh, it can help us in uh, evaluating the volume status, and of course the internal jugular, which we are right now studying in the hospital. Diagnosis of COVID-19 at this moment, the standard for diagnosis of COVID-19 is a positive PCR test. It's not the presence of ground glass opacities in uh, any patient. So COVID-19 pneumonia manifests with chest CT imaging abnormalities even in non-symptomatic patients. And they can be uh, from focal unilateral to diffuse ground glass opacities Then progress uh, and may coexist with consolidation. So this is from uh, the cruise ship data and um, I would like to share some of 
of the images from from that study is still not final and you can see where to get it from the bottom and here we can see uh, a square on the uh, on your left of the screen a uh, square um, ground glass opacity lobular and then on the right of, of the uh, screen, you can see a ground glass opacity again, very close to the to the pleura with some air bronchogram. And um, basically this will be easily catched by the ultrasound if performed uh, correctly. Same here with this patient who has a 73-year-old asymptomatic woman. Um, the, the patient has diffuse ground glass opacities, again, with consolidation and bronchiectasis. Uh, and you can see that it's very close to the pleura, so we will be able to see that with the ultrasound, probably with a B lines or a C pattern. Um, you can see my prior video about uh, pneumonia. There are some uh, B lines that are very common in pneumonia that are very uh, dense and not flickering, just like the B lines that you will see in patients who have pulmonary edema. So interesting from the first case report in America for COVID-19, we can see this normal chest X-ray that at the seven day progressed to this uh, three opacities in the both lung bases and that were likely an atypical pneumonia again as I explained in a prior video so atypical pneumonias are a uh, clinical scenario where you have radiologic findings and not much of a clinical finding uh, this probably will be found by uh, the ultrasound and we will be able to see bilateral B lines and most likely the heart of this patient will be normal with a normal eye, uh, inferior vena cava and a normal internal jugular. So the images of LUS and COVID-19 so far there are no studies indexed and finally peer reviewed. I have reached out some of my peers in Europe to send me their images. However, uh, we can expect that since COVID-19 may present as bilateral interstitial disease and may progress to acute respiratory distress syndrome, we can use the ultrasound as an adjuvant of our initial evaluation and monitoring of the sick. So first we need to have the clinical scenario and then we need to do our LUS and probably use another type of imaging so we can have both imaging going on, at least a baseline imaging at the beginning with uh, other type of imaging such as H S chest X-ray or a CT scan. And then we can follow this with the LUS and, and monitor uh, improvement or worsening. And here we have uh, published uh, in, in the web by the people from um, uh, Butterfly, which is, which is a, a brand of ultrasounds. And you can see these very solid uh, B lines that uh, are coming from um, of both sides of a rib. You can see the rib on the top and a little bit of uh, plural thickening. If you compare this to my video from uh, pneumonias uh, done before, it's not really different. I have another one of these images and what we see here is a lot of B lines, more than four B lines uh, in between both two ribs with a pleura that is not moving a lot and probably with some consolidation and uh, these B lines are flickering such as the B lines in uh, pulmonary edema. I, I, I ask you to go and check their website. Their website is here in the bottom. So a cautionary tale COVID-19 will not produce different images than the images we see in pneumonia, ARDS, fibrosis and pulmonary edema. Uh, I don't expect that this is going to be different and 
I expect that at least in the hospital, we are first going to check eight quadrants supine and to start and probably then if the patient allows check the back of the patient. If you have many quadrants that are bilateral or unilateral with B lines and the patient has a fever, has cough, shortness of breath, history of traveling or contact or sick contacts, although this is not anymore true as the guidelines evolve, uh, this patient may be uh, present presenting with a uh, COVID-19 pneumonia uh, or an atypical pneumonia and you would like to probably test this patient or um, follow this patient. Also, um, it is very important in patients who you are treating with shortness of breath that point of care ultrasound will help you significantly to know what is your volume status. And this, along with the clinical setting and laboratory, you will have a better idea of the volume status. And why am I saying so many times about the volume status? So LUS has been tested to aid in the management of ARDS and it gives you real-time assessment of the lungs, can be used as a measure to evaluate the volume status again, and can help uh, this is for the intensive intensivist only, but it gives you to the hospitalist an idea that we can figure out that increasing PEEP or changing uh, ventilation modes will change the way the diaphragm moves and you can actually measure that with the point of care ultrasound. So how this fits at the end, especially for us hospitalists and uh, clinicians, if you have a patient with the symptoms of COVID-19 and you perform a pulmonary ultrasound and found more, more than one area of consolidation based on the presence of a B profile, which means you have three or more B lines on a quadrant and a C profile, um, which you have a consolidation, chances are that this patient may have an atypical pneumonia and this can support your decision to test. This is an opinion based on available literature and uh, in, the, in the right case scenario, maybe you want to test this patient for COVID-19 and probably isolate this patient and follow him with telemedicine or um, by phone to see how the patient is doing or of course if the patient is doing bad admit to the pay to the hospital so how this fits at the end if you have a covid 19 patient admitted serial long examination may help you to evaluate for progression or regression of disease this is my opinion and it's based on the usefulness of ultrasound in the management of acute respiratory distress syndrome If you have a COVID-19 patient admitted who has severe lung disease, conservative management of fluid is recommended. This is coming from the guidelines uh, from the uh, American College of Chest Physicians that are going to, well, sorry, the, the, the International Society of Critical Care that are going to be uh, published soon. And... Um, this may help you avoid fluid overload. We don't want patients with ARDS to have fluid overload, and this is part of the guidelines too. Um, at the end, I do not recommend the use of long ultrasound as a sole diagnostic tool for new COVID-19 disease. Point of care ultrasound may be in the, patient, in the outpatient clinic, and initial evaluation of the patient helps suspect early the presence of COVID-19 when finding a patient with the right presentations and symptoms and bilateral airway disease without the presence of confounding factors such as cardiogenic edema or chronic interstitial disease. It may be a great tool to evaluate advance and regression of disease since it is readily available and easy to decontaminate, also avoid the patient being transported to CT machines or other imaging models. 
It is a proven tool to assess ejection fraction and add information to volume status using the inferior vena cava and the internal jugular. So that, that, that's, that's a plus. You have your clinic and you have your ultrasound. Also, it can help in the floor to assess the necessity or not of diuresis in these patients and follow up resolution of radiological features of lung injury. So you will have less machines in the, in the um, room and you will have less people going doing exams to these patients as long as you are documented what is going on with the lung ultrasound. So thank you for watching. We'll try to update this video as more information is available. Please subscribe and like the video, follow the channel, and thank you again.